CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Right now we are working on a few breaking news stories at this hour. A South Florida woman who was carjacked at a Winter Springs intersection is believed to be dead. Her car was found on fire. The 31 year old was reportedly traveling to Central Florida to visit family and was reportedly carjacked during a press conference earlier today. The sheriff's office said they believe that the burned car is that of the the victim along with the body found inside CBS News Miami's Nakia Carrera will have much more tonight at five. Also breaking a federal judge has rejected a plea deal for a former career U.S. diplomat. He admitted to working as a secret agent for Cuba. Juan Manuel Rocha was arrested and indicted back in December. He is accused of defrauding the United States and acting as an illegal agent of a foreign government. In his original not guilty plea, he says he fully understands the nature of what he is charged with and waived formal arraignment. He remained in federal detention since the arrest. Our Yvonne Taylor is covering this story. Look for his report tonight at five. Right now on CBS News Miami, a family and neighborhood in shock. It's after a father of six was shot and killed. CBS News Miami's Morgan Reiner has been covering this story. She's on the scene with what we are learning from the victim's family. I'm shocked, really. I'm really shocked because all the, you know, we haven't heard nothing like this in Perrine for quite a while. This woman says she was woken up in the early hours of Friday morning. All I heard was the car screeching. It went around the circle on Hibiscus Street and it, I heard a bang, so that got me up. And she walked outside and saw this white car in her neighbor's driveway. And when I looked at the car, I dialed 911 because I saw guns. Gun, well, gunshots in the passenger side and the back window was shot completely out. Family identified the driver to me as Calvin Day, a father of six in his late 20s. They said he was leaving his sister's house just around the corner when his car was shot countless times. Calvin managed to keep moving forward, ran over the median, and then came to a final stop in a random driveway. He did not survive. The random driveway belonged to Shantaria Morris. People knocking on the door, um, screaming, saying that someone had died in my yard. Um, so I came out to try to help, but then the, the police were on scene, the paramedics came. Beyond being sad over the lost life in her driveway, as a single mother, she said she's not sure how she's going to financially recover from it. I was just looking at the damage, just thinking like, okay, of course, this is a another expense, and I am a single parent. My home is running on one house, uh, one income. Uh, God is my source; He provides everything for me. Still, many questions the family told me they want answers to. Who was the shooter? Was it targeted? Questions the family told me they will not rest until they are answered. In West Prime, Morgan Reiner, CBS News, Miami. A Miami senior high school teacher was arrested. It is after allegedly sending inappropriate texts to two female students. CBS News Miami's Peter Dinch has the latest on this developing story. We are at Miami Senior High School where we will have the latest on the arrests of a former teacher, 24-year-old Roger Allen Nees. He is accused of sending inappropriate messages to at least two students. In one case, reportedly telling one of them, I have a crush on you. Another case, asking if a student would go around town with him and go to the movies. Now, the Miami-Dade County Public School System reacted swiftly in this case as Alan East came before a judge in bond court today. We'll have the latest on that story coming up at 5 tonight on CBS News Miami. This is Peter Dench, CBS News Miami. It has been one year since record rainfall hit Fort Lauderdale. More than two feet of rain fell in some areas. Floodwaters got so high, planes were grounded at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. The historic flooding prompted the city to add more than a dozen neighborhoods for drainage improvements. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. 
and taking a live look outside at downtown Miami. We are expecting a big cool down this weekend. Next weather chief meteorologist Ivan Cabrera joins us with when we can expect those temperatures to drop. You know, I think tomorrow we wake up in the 60s and that's going to feel refreshing uh, 70s this morning, but the humidity has dropped throughout the day. We're 83 right now. That dew point at 53 and look at the relative humidity, right? 36%. That's very low for this time of year and not much in the way of cloud cover. We have even in the mid levels of the atmosphere some dry air. So these temperatures and these humidity valleys are going to continue with us the next few days and that is going to bode well for the weekend with dry air on top and low humidity here and low moisture content at the surface that we are sitting pretty for the weekend. Just a slight bump in the humidity into next week, but that's late next week, Wednesday into Thursday. So a preview of what we'll wake up to. I think some of us again in the low 60s. That's pretty chilly for this time of year and the dry air is just making it feel even cooler. But by the afternoon, and we're going to jump 20 degrees. So big range in temperature for tomorrow and the same deal on Sunday. So we're talking about cool mornings, mild dry afternoons with high pressure building yet eventually that high migrates east and we get that easterly wind and that will begin to moderate temperatures. I think as we head into next week and towards the end of next week, next weekend doesn't look as cool as this one. We'll have temperatures getting back to average and slowly but surely we'll get rid of the cool air entirely. So 60s in the morning, I think we'll approach 80 degrees and then get into some low 80s, particularly across the inland areas. But you can see their wall to wall sunshine throughout the entire day. The only issue tomorrow uh, f could be uh, the wind. It's going to be a little bit breezy, so we're going to have gusts anywhere from 15 to as high as 25 miles an hour, and that's going to set the stage, I think, for boating conditions, which have improved today to go right back downhill. So likely either a small craft caution or a small craft advisor if you're planning on taking out a boat or joining someone with one. Sunday, 80 degrees. We'll wake up with temperatures in the 60s, and then really it's going to be a slow climb in the low to mid 80s through the end of next week. I think uh, Naja will get right back to temperatures approaching 90 degrees by the time we get into a Friday, because by then, not just low rain chances, but I think humidity will certainly be back and that will moderate overnight temperatures as well. Ivan, thank you. When we come back, we have the latest on the crisis in Haiti and the emotional reunion from one of our very own. Off the top, we are following some breaking news right now. This just into our newsroom. Live pictures, Chopper 4 over the scene of a large trash fire in Opelika. You can see fire crews on the scene as they work to extinguish that fire. We are working to learn new information and we'll bring you the very latest coming up tonight at 5. Now at four, Iran has vowed revenge for a strike on its consulate in Syria. They say it was carried out with Israel with the permission from the U.S. Erica Brown has the report from Washington. Israelis are bracing for an attack from Iran, which U.S. officials tell CBS News is imminent. I think this is a very dangerous time, not only for the region, but for the world. A U.S. official tells CBS News Iran's Revolutionary Guard has completed preparations of drones and missiles to launch into Israel. And more than 150 cruise missiles are ready to go, and that number has gone up in the past couple of days to make sure some get through Israeli defenses. The impending attack is in retaliation for a deadly airstrike on the Iranian consulate in Syria that Iran blames on Israel. Tensions are at extreme high right now. The, the move to strike the embassy annex of the Iranians was an extremely provocative move. Iran also blames America for the attack on the consulate, something the U.S. denies. But President Biden has made clear the U.S. stands ready to support Israel if they're attacked. Obviously, we've seen the threats uh, coming from uh, Iran, and so we have made ourselves very clear where we stand in supporting Israel's uh, security. That is ironclad. Sources tell CBS News Iran has also increased shipments of weapons to proxies throughout the region, putting a potential target on U.S. forces. A strike on American soldiers would force the U.S. to respond. I am really concerned about that, that small skirmishes here and there could uh, lead uh, to an open war. Attacks on U.S. forces in the Middle East have been on the rise since the Israel-Hamas war began in October. Erica Brown, CBS News, Washington. 
Closer to home, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis held a press conference. It was in St. Augustine earlier today. It's to sign a bill he says is aimed towards protecting law enforcement. DeSantis signed Senate Bill 184. It's to prohibit the harassment of a police officer or first responder when they are actively doing their job. DeSantis also confirmed that the new bill will increase penalties on those who harass, injure, or kill a canine. Turning now to the crisis in Haiti. The State Department says they will no longer sponsor relief flights out of the island, but one more flight, possibly the last one, landed at Miami International Airport just hours ago. CBS News Miami's Tanya Francois knows one of those passengers very well. Mr. Francois. <laughs> After months of waiting, weeks of convincing, and the State Department stopping their flights, my father decided to no longer risk remaining in Haiti. He boarded a helicopter from the embassy before getting on a plane to come back to his other home here in South Florida. I left my house at 5 o'clock in the morning, 47 a.m. at the embassy, and then I'm here now. It's been a long time. The violence in Haiti continues and leaving the island nation that is still being overrun by gangs has become more difficult for Americans. Democrats in Congress say they've had 75 briefings trying to convince their Republican counterparts to sign off on funding that would pay for a multi-nation military intervention. They say Republicans want to see Haiti stabilized first. For Americans like my father, the constant instability made the decision to leave easier. Who finally made you decide to come back? Some lady named Tanya. <laughs> I wanted to get out of the country so we had safer, to find a, a safer house. Lois Pierre was also on this State Department flight. At 16, she says she's ready to start school and leave what's happening in Haiti behind her. I managed to get out with my mom, and we wanted to go as, as quick as possible because we don't know what's going to happen next. We don't know when the country is going to close. So we took the opportunity to leave, like, as soon as possible. How long are you here for, Dad? God knows. I don't know. I'm trying to go back as soon as possible. What is it about Haiti that's so alluring? It's paradise. Paradise on Earth. <laughs> Tanya Francois, CBS News, Miami. This is Fort Lauderdale Fashion Week, and some of the biggest names in the fashion industry were honored for breaking barriers in the world of fashion. Take a look. Here is a look at the industry leaders who were recognized for inclusivity in the fashion world and art industry. This was during Fort Lauderdale Fashion Week Impact Awards Gala. I had the honor to host and MC the event. Fort Lauderdale Fashion Week is now the second largest fashion week in the state of Florida. It features designers who embrace inclusivity and in fashion, diversity, and give back to the community and the buyers who can give them a global platform. Proceeds from Fort Lauderdale Fashion Week benefit the Jules Foundation, a local nonprofit focused on mentoring at-risk youth. It was certainly an honor to be part of such a special evening, and congratulations to all the game changers in South Florida's fashion industry. That's the CBS News Miami QuickCast. I'm Nasha Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami and have a wonderful Friday.